we have a new streams release and that means that we have also a new video which will take you through the new features and through the main changes in this release. So this time we look at the 026 release. And let's start with uh, some of the new features which were added. Uh, one of the main things uh, which we added is that uh, we added support for the new Apache Kafka versions for 3.0.0 and 2.8.1, which are both supported now. And on the other hand, uh, we removed the support for Kafka 2.7, uh, both, both uh, 2.7.0 and 2.7.1. Uh, what is important to mention is that uh, uh, right now in this release we support Kafka 3.0 only in the mode with Zookeeper, the Zookeeper list or uh, or craft mode uh, as it is called sometimes is not supported in Streamzy and it's not really production ready and it's missing some important things like uh, upgrades from the Zookeeper based clusters and so on. So we will definitely support it in the future but uh, we will probably wait until it's uh, it's ready. Uh, another feature uh, which we worked on is a new artifact type for the Kafka Connect build. Uh, it's uh, the Maven type artifact and uh, what it does is uh, it lets you download connector plugins directly from Maven repositories. So you basically just specify the the group uh, ID, artifact ID, and the version of the of the jar in uh, in the Maven repository, and then Streams will take care of downloading the connector and all its dependencies uh, directly from Maven. So uh, yeah, that's really simple to use because you don't need to specify all the different dependencies. And if you have some connector which uh, doesn't distribute zip or targz files, then this uh, this artifact type is uh, very handy. Uh, there are also some other small improvements to the Kafka Connect build. There's a new insecure flag if you want to download the connectors uh, from servers which uh, use TLS but have some problems with its configuration, such as uh, expired or self-signed certificates or Maybe the host name is not matching the the subject alternative names uh, in the certificates and so on. And uh, on OpenShift, you can now also specify pool secrets uh, uh, when using the Kafka Connect build, so that uh, OpenShift can authenticate against the registry when uh, pulling the base image, uh, which is used for the new uh, newly built Kafka Connect image. Now. Uh, Let's have a look at a quick demo and uh, let's try the new Maven artifacts. And we can start directly with the Kafka Connect custom resource. What we can see here is that uh, I have here the usual configuration where I tell Streamzy where do I want to push the new container image. And then I have the plugin section where I specify the plugins which I want to use. And uh, this connector is using the new type Maven artifact. And what I really do here is uh, I use one of the Apache Camel connectors, the timer connector, and I specify the group ID of the Maven artifact, the artifact ID, and the version which I want to use. And that's all I need to do. Everything else will be taken care of by Streamsy. So I I've actually already deployed it and you can see that it's uh, already running. What we can do, we can have a look at the custom resource and we can check the status where we can see here that the connector was reloaded and it's available there. And what we can also do when we get back to the pod, we can actually try to exec into the pod And what we can do is we can do ls plugins common timer connector. And what we see here is that we have all the different dependencies which the connector needs. So we really specify just the single connector, but all the dependencies were pulled uh, in automatically 
from Maven. And if you would be interested in uh, how it is done in Strimzy, we can also check uh, the Docker file uh, which we use uh, to build this container image. Uh, so that will be this uh, config map. And what we can see in this Docker file is we actually use uh, multi-stage build, where in the first stage we use Maven to download all the artifacts uh, from Maven. And then uh, in the next stage, we just uh, use the Strimzy base image and we just add the plugin by uh, copying it from the, from the previous stage. So this is all built directly inside your Kubernetes cluster. And uh, just to see that we have it really available, we can uh, deploy some connectors. So I create some topic and I deploy the timer source connector, which will send some timer message every second. And uh, we will also use the echo sync connector to read these messages and print them into the standard output. So cube cuddle apply dash f that should deploy it and when we do kubectl locks from the kafka connect cluster then uh, we can see that every second we get a uh, new message here so that's the new maven type artifact in uh, kafka connect and uh, in the description under the youtube video you will find uh, the link to a GitHub repository with this demo so that if you want, you can also uh, give it a try at home. Another set of new features is uh, around uh, our JMX support. Uh, JMX can be now exposed uh, also from Zookeeper. Uh, already from the previous versions, uh, we support it in uh, Kafka Brokers and in Kafka Connect and Kafka Mirror Maker 2. Uh, and in Zookeeper, it really works exactly in the same way. Uh, and there's also a second uh, new feature related to JMX, and that's that uh, you can now use the uh, Kafka custom resource to specify the labels and annotations for the secrets with the JMX credentials. Uh, what uh, is really cool about all the JMX support is that uh, this is something that's completely contributed by the users. So it's super nice to see the JMX support growing to all the different uh, components. And uh, thanks to all the contributors who contributed these features. There are also some cruise control improvements. Uh, the connection between the uh, cluster operator and the cruise control is now secured it's using encryption and authentication uh, because we know that some users are uh, actually using uh, cruise control and connecting to it also directly not using it only through the operator there's also possibility how to disable it in the cruise control configuration but uh, keep that in mind that by default uh, it will be now secured uh, and you will need to disable the security if you want to connect to it directly and uh, we also made it possible to configure or enable the anomaly detection feature, uh, which again can be done in the Kafka custom resource in the cruise control uh, configuration section. There are also some changes to the Helm charts. Uh, before Streams 026, uh, we had these uh, override fields. Uh, which you could use to specify the image repository or registry or, or the tag for all the different images uh, which are part of Strumze. But this didn't work that well because uh, when you use these overrides, it was not possible to, in addition to that, configure a different uh, address for one of the images. So in Strumze 026, this, uh, this changed a bit. Uh, the old options are now removed. And instead, there are now uh, these new default uh, options which you can configure. 
but uh, when you configure also uh, the individual images for I don't know the operators or some Kafka or Kafka Connect, then uh, the individual images will take uh, uh, precedence and will be used uh, first uh, instead of the default uh, images. So uh, if you use the Helm chart, uh, this is uh, something that uh, might help you. Uh, there are also some other smaller changes. Uh, in Stream 025, we uh, added a size, uh, size limit to the empty DIR volumes, which we use for the temporary files. But in some situations, mainly with, for example, with Kafka Connect, uh, when you use some connector which needs to store some data in, uh, in the slash TMP directory, the default size was not sufficient. So in Stream 026, you can now uh, increase the size limit when you need uh, because, for example, you are using one of those connectors, so uh, that gives you some more flexibility. Uh, also, the Kafka bridge was updated to a new version, which uh, mainly updates some of the dependencies and address some CVEs. And uh, also, we released the drain cleaner tool, uh, which uh, can help you to make sure that your Kafka cluster will stay available while you are draining uh, worker nodes of your Kubernetes cluster or where you are doing upgrades. Uh, so that's something you should uh, look into. There's a very nice blog post on the streamz.io website, so check it out. There are also some removals and deprecations. Uh, Kafka 3.0 deprecates uh, MirrorMaker 1 uh, and it will be removed in uh, Apache Kafka 4.0. Uh, so we kind of follow uh, Kafka's lead and we also deprecate the Kafka MirrorMaker custom resource, which can be used to deploy MirrorMaker 1. And uh, we will remove this resource uh, in the future when we add support for uh, Apache Kafka 4.0. And as a replacement, uh, you can use the Mirror Maker 2. And uh, if you want to get the old behavior from the old Mirror Maker 1, where it was mirroring the topics with exactly the same name, you can use the identity replication policy in the configuration, and then the topic names uh, will not change. And one thing which we removed are the OpenShift templates. Uh, so these were part of the examples, but they offered only very basic templating feature, basically just key value replacements, and they were really too simple for the Streamzy custom resources, which can be sometimes complex. So we didn't really saw the value in keeping those and maintaining those, so those are now removed. So that's uh, the main changes in the Streamzy 026 release. I hope we have some of the features which you are waiting for and that you will upgrade soon.